Greetings from downtown Cleveland, Ohio. Today is Thursday, January 19th, 2023. It is about 4.42 p.m. You can see the sun is just setting, but it was a pretty nice afternoon here in downtown Cleveland. In fact, the temperature right now is 53 degrees. A little bit earlier, it was up to 56. This morning, it was like a ton of rain. And there's supposed to be some more rain coming maybe around 7 o'clock or later, possibly. But yeah, today, we're just going to try to do a walk around downtown Cleveland. Kind of our little January update. I think the last one we did might have been November. Can't remember if I did one before that. But while I'm here outside of Cleveland State University, two, two little things. Earlier today, CSU announced a new logo that they're going to start rolling out. They're still going to have the old seal, but as far as other branding goes, they're going to be doing this, right this logo, right emphasizing CSU with the U. And I think they're also going to have like the tagline, We Are Cleveland State University. And then the logo also now includes like a portion of the skyline as well as Rhodes Tower in the logo itself. So we'll see how, what people think of that. I think it looks pretty cool, but it's easy for me to say I try to support everything possible Cleveland State. And then in the background, if you see Rhodes Tower there, uh, a little bit earlier, the video is not ready yet, but I featured a mural that's located on the third floor of the Michael Short's library outside of the special collections area. There's actually another side to this mural if you look on the far right there. So I spent about like five minutes talking about all the ties to Cleveland located within that mural. So you can look forward to that video. I'm not sure if I'll publish it today or tomorrow. And then I guess two other quick things. They have just started construction on the Starbucks, which is going to be located right here. And then the Chick-fil-A, they've started construction. It's going to be down that way. So they put up, like, false walls. You can kind of see over here if I get a little bit closer. Right there, that's like a wall that blocks off the access that used to be to this hallway. And then I also sent a message to Barrio asking if they were still going to be opening a location at Cleveland State and they said yes in the future there still are plans for them to replace the Papa John's in the main classroom at CSU but I don't know it hasn't started yet Papa John's is still open there so I wouldn't expect it to happen anytime soon but it's still on the radar So a big component of this walk, as is the, the case with many of my general downtown walks where I just do updates, is that I'm going to try passing by the City Club Apartments as well as the Sherwin-Williams Headquarter. Both of those are construction projects that have been ongoing, and there's been qu quite a bit of progress since our last walk past it. I don't know what's going to be moving in there, but last week when I was eating at Enjoy, because I still get Philly cheesesteaks and fries from there often, I saw someone roaming around inside of the old Burgers to Beer. And I asked the guy from Enjoy, I said, oh, are they, uh, is someone 
there's a restaurant moving in, and he, he said, yes, so, you know, something is going to be moving in there. I tried to look online, but I couldn't figure out what yet. But that place is already set up to have, like, a bar area, so it's, like, perfect for a burger and bar place. So I imagine something like that would try to move in. And then also, for all the years that I've been near the CSU campus, I had never been inside of Bon Appetit. And then last week, for the first time, I went uh, during a lunch break and went inside Bon Appetit and got a chicken parmesan and, and french fries. So it was pretty tasty. Even though it's two different places, Bon Appetit and Casa, they, like, share the space. And the Casa place, you kind of go through a a line, so to speak, and uh, you tell them what you want in their, your bowl, and then Bon Appetit has more of the pre-made items. So yeah, it was uh, tasty. So it's always nice to add another item to my candidate of lunch spots. So now I have a pretty wide range of selections between Boney Barbecue Fingers over there, Rascal House Pizza right there, Bon Appetit, Enjoy, whatever he's going to move into Burgers to Beer, and then eventually in the future Chick-fil-A. I imagine Chick-fil-A will be pretty crowded if we judge based on how, how many cars are in drive throughs at Chick-fil-A. There's always quite a bit of a wait. You see the CSU Law College still has their Christmas tree up. When's the cutoff for Christmas trees? Is it is January still okay for it? Mid-January? Feels good uh, to get the walking in right now. I'm trying to keep my ankle active when I was. I often play recreation basketball during my lunch breaks, and then for the first time, and God, I I can't remember how long when the last time I had a rolled ankle was, but it was probably like over six years ago. But I cut through traffic and made a nice layup during a game earlier but then when I came down through the traffic felt my ankle completely roll to the left then completely roll the opposite direction to the right so I got it both ways but I was just happy when I looked down and saw that the ankle was still straight meaning it wasn't like broken or anything like that I was like I can deal with uh rolled ankle, although I have a uh, nice size golf ball on the left side there. Tower, more like a tennis ball, I guess. Size swelling. Once we get a little bit further ahead here, we're probably going to start catching some sun glare on the stream. Yeah, right there.
looks like we've got a dance class or something going on here. That's inside the Idea Stream building. If you notice me mute the audio every so often, it's probably because I'm hearing music playing nearby. And since I'm past the 1,000 subscriber mark now, I try to, if possible, not have it so YouTube flags me for possible copyright violations of playing music. Welcome, Paula Baylor. Glad to see you in the chat watching, along with the other eight viewers currently watching. Welcome, hope you're enjoying a leisurely stroll through downtown Cleveland. Also, if you haven't seen yet, everyone, I've launched a companion blog in the past week called pocotraveler.com. So I plan on writing some articles in that. Some of it will contain like a combination of a video and some context. For example, even though it's not published yet, that mural that I shot video of in Rhodes Tower earlier, I'll publish that to YouTube, but then I also at some point plan on writing an article on pocotraveler.com where... Yes, I'll include the video at the very top of the article, but then I'll write about it and write some context and show some still pictures and talk about or write about some of the people in the mural itself as well as some of the origins of the mural. Because, like, for example, that mural used to be located in Ohio City by the West Side Market, so I would try to add some context like that. And then one other thing, here's just a uh, little screenshot of what the website looks like. Again, it's pocotraveler.com. You can see right now the latest article I have up there is talking about the history of Baker's Bakery. So there's no video associated with that, but I did like some research over the long Martin Luther Day, uh, King Day weekend for, from like old Plain Dealer archives and uh, put that article together. And the one thing I like about it is that I mean, you guys may know that I've operated a Cleveland Browns blog for years, and I'm, yes, I'm passionate about that, but I've been doing that since 2006. So writing about the Browns over and over, even though it's still fun and I enjoy it, it's like, becomes a little redundant. When I, when I wrote that Baker's Bakery article, there was like so much energy in my body just to like do the research and look it up. So yeah, hopefully there's some nice content that you guys can look forward to there. I'll try to do some updates to the YouTube community informing you guys whenever there's a new blog or maybe I'll update it every so often like say oh here's the latest five blogs that I posted go check them out if you want to. Steven asks during your stroll are you going to pass by Sherwin Williams? I think you were heading right toward it. Yes. I'm going to go to the City Club Apartments and then pass by the Sherwin-Williams construction. 
those are the two things on my agenda for sure. Then after that, not entirely certain, but I, I don't think I'll end it at Sherwin Williams. I'll probably try to take advantage of this nice weather because probably before long it's going to be back to 30 degree weather or colder where I'll need like hand warmers on in order to hold the camera equipment. Right now I'm still able to go gloveless with it being about 50 degrees now. So on the left side here, we are seeing the City Club Apartments. You can no longer see into the ground. Like the, I think the last time you came by, you could still mostly see a little bit into like the foundation and you could see some beams starting to raise. But now you're seeing like the cement and the structure and even the ceilings and they've got like the lights all strung inside. So the first several levels of this are pretty well constructed already yeah I think last time we came by that area over there which is presumably like the elevator shaft is what they were starting to erect first but now we've got like all this other construction I know I had looked it up when I first started talking about this construction last year, but I forget how many floors it's supposed to be. I imagine it's going to be, from my recollection, taller than uh, the City Club building on the left. It's not going to be like a super big skyscraper, but it'll serve a decent amount of tenants. And if I recall correctly, I think that's going to be a mixture of a hotel and... I uh, believe there's going to be some space in there where someone can, like, permanently rent it. So even though it's 50-some degrees, the heavy rain from early this morning, you can see, has left puddles. Let's see if we can see our reflection in here. Oh, i got to be standing over here. Or I gotta be standing the other direction, right? <laughs> Is that it? No. I'll figure this out one way or another. <laughs> it must be, uh, yeah, I guess with the direction of the sunlight, I'm not gonna be able to catch my own reflection right now. But yeah, when I left this morning to walk toward the bus stop, the sidewalks that I was walking on were nothing but like puddle after puddle, like deep puddles, which I expected because I know the drainage on heavy rain days for that particular street. But it's good that it got up to 50s, the 50 degree weather today, because if it would have stayed less... You would have hated for that water to just be hanging around by the time it got colder so it would freeze up. Here's my obligated mention for the one user who complained one time that I did never mention Marble Room. Here's the Marble Room. <laughs> so 
right now we're at East 6th Street. Off of Euclid Avenue. Heading toward Public Square. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to stick around for when it becomes dark out at Public Square, but supposedly they have completed the Winterland light exhibit at Public Square. What is this? Balance bowls? I'm not saying this hasn't been here, but I feel like I haven't seen this place before. Balance Pan-Asian Grill. Yeah, but what was I thinking? Oh, I was, uh, I was gonna say last week I did a live stream on Friday just a 30 minute live stream where I walked by Progressive Field to talk about some of the future renovations there. But then I ended it by coming to Public Square when it was like dark out and you could see the lights. And I thought the Winterland lights were finished. And by Winterland, I mean that, you know, during the Christmas time, they have Christmas lights that go up at Public Square along with the tree and other decorations. But I had seen the Downtown Cleveland Alliance promoting on social media that Winterland lights were coming where they were going to like take down the color Christmas lights and make it so all the lights were more of like white to represent like snow and the winter feel. And I saw some of those white lights last week when I was going by and I was like pointing them out on the live stream. But then I saw the Downtown Cleveland Alliance reply to one of my tweets promoting it and they said like oh they were thanking me for doing that but also indicated that they weren't completely finished installing the lights I don't know what this is either this I mean this is this is CLE that's kind of indicative of uh, that over there like the welcome center but I don't know why there's like a desk here. I feel like this space, I haven't seen this illuminated before. I don't know if something's coming there. It does still say retail space available for lease. Maybe the lights just usually aren't, aren't on there. Fernando Martin says, how I miss you, Cleveland. Beautiful state. You said you're from Trinidad and Tobago and you were there in 2004 to 2005 for a holiday and you stayed on the west side, Clinton Avenue. Now, is it Clinton Avenue or Clifton? Because I'm trying to think. Clinton, I know there's a Clinton Avenue kind of off of West Boulevard, but there, I think of like a lot of factories are kind of near Clinton Avenue. I know Clifton runs along Cleveland and Lakewood and is kind of right up to Lake Erie. And that's like a really long street with probably expensive houses lined up and down the street. But anyway, I forget if I finished my story about the uh, Downtown Cleveland Alliance, but they had said that they weren't completely finished installing all the winter lights. But then yesterday or two days ago, I saw that now it's ready. I guess it, even though it's not dark, we'll probably, as we're passing by, see some of those lights. Last week I was just over there where I showed off the lights. I mean, it's nothing extravagant, so to speak. It's just more of getting the vibe of seeing the lights at Public Square. I try to use my judgment when I'm walking by uh, public square just to stay away from groups of individuals, so to speak. 
Not that they're doing anything. They're not doing anything wrong, but. This makes it less likely for them to comment like, hey, what are you filming? I'm like, no, I'm just trying to show off downtown Cleveland. Yes, again, so I think the main change is that instead of these, and I forget where exactly the color lights were, but I think they were replaced with white lights and they also now have the, not Christmas lights, but the other lights that are illuminating upward into the tree, which are more visible when it gets darker out. They do still have the arch there that was around for Christmas time and that was lit up as of yesterday morning still. And the Winterland, you can't avoid this. Dave Kreider's artwork for all your photo opportunities. I think that guy gestured toward the camera, did something like that. <laughs> I wasn't looking, I was like staring at the Winterland sign here. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. But yes, now we're approaching the Sherwin-Williams construction. You can already see how big it is like that. That right there used to not exist. And before long, we're probably going to see it reach like way up there as far as being a tall skyscraper that changes the downtown Cleveland skyline. ice skating rink. I don't know if it's open today. It's only open certain days now, but it's supposed to be up through February. And they still have the CLE sign along with the polar bears and the snowflake. So yeah, so the main change is like instead of all those being colored Christmas lights and all these being colored Christmas lights, they've just gone to a white colored palette now. I don't think any construction started on this portion over here, which is the, gonna be the smaller building. Oh, they've laid, maybe like flattened the parking lot. The old parking lot, I mean. Although I imagine they're gonna dig into the ground eventually. occupancy by 2024 so that's I was thinking 2025 in my head 2024 would be well, probably won't be early next year I imagine it'll be later in 2024 And again, I've showed this before, so you can see a comparison of the height perspective, like how it's going to be a smaller building, although I think it'll be taller than that on the, the right side, and then the bigger building is going to be on the left with the inner link that connects the two of them. Uh, 
Oh, here we go. We got a clearer shot now. Oops, sorry. I was look, looking at the thing and not realizing my thing was blurry through the gate. Trying to see if I can get the right angle because if I turn it this way, can't put the camera through the gate quite. I think through here you can still get a shot. One more look right here. Yeah, so again, we're just more so showing the construction taking place. I do see a staircase all the way over there. Someone's walking down right now. And then I assume the elevator shafts will be in there. And way back there, I do see a Sherwin-Williams banner. along with a porta potty <laughs> for construction workers. <laughs> but yes, it's nice to see the progress. Look at the airplane coming in. I assume that's gonna loop around Lake Erie and then head toward Hopkins. Anytime a plane takes that view, usually actually what I'm used to is it's like flying, when I'm coming back from somewhere, it's flying over the lake, goes to downtown, and then like turns around, around downtown, and then goes toward Hopkins. I actually had a picture at nighttime that I took zoomed in with my phone. I think I did like the 10 times zoom feature. The picture was like sideways, but then I cropped it and straightened it in a certain way to where it looked pretty nice for a skyline picture from an airplane up above. That was back on January 9th, I think.
I was gonna say the gates was temporarily open. I could have got a clearer shot. <laughs> but the vehicle is coming out, he's just closing it now. It's like someone left their Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Well, this is actually a really good shot right here, huh? Fernando, I have not done a walk in the West Side Market. I've that's one of like my that's probably the top video that I've been thinking about for the existence of this channel, like the past two years. Like, oh, not only West Side Market, but the kind of that area near West 25th Street. Initially I was waiting because outside of the West Side Market they've just had that scaffolding and construction up, which you know, kind of makes it look, I don't want to say ugly, but I always would think to myself, oh, if I'm going to do a video, I'll wait until they're done with this scaffolding and construction. But I don't, I honestly don't think they're doing any work on it that's going to be finished anytime soon. I feel like the scaffolding is up just to like protect people from falls or uh, falling debris or something. So, yeah, one of these days I'll give in and just do the video if I'm not mistaken this building right here is supposed to be a new restaurant coming soon I thought it was maybe actually open already but it's not but yeah the construction is new and I, I think it's gonna have a rooftop bar granted the roof is you know it's not like it's on a skyscraper but what's supposed to be cool about it is like if you're eating up there you're kind of above, like, the Playhouse Square area. Now, granted, your your view right now is just a bunch of construction, but it'll be a unique spot to have a rooftop uh, rooftop presence for that restaurant. Let me walk over there and see if see if they advertise what's coming soon. No, it doesn't say. I'm pretty sure I read it in articles online that this was the location of whatever I'm thinking of. I wonder if we can see the mural from out here. Oh, you can. So if you go inside 55 uh, residence, one of the new things they have is a mural just inside here too. Let me try to block the sunlight. So I covered a mural in Cleveland State on the third floor of Michael Short's library earlier. That video will be live later. This is, you know, kind of a variation of it too. You've got the terminal tower, Cleveland script sign, trolley, guardian, statue, other statues, the boat. This is a perspective of downtown Cleveland that I seldom see. I'm like never standing here where I see, you know, Terminal Tower here and then the rest of Public Square to the left. And what's nice is that once the Sherwin-Williams construction is finished, you'll still have, if you're standing here, a nice view of Terminal Tower. You're not going to be too blocked, but then you'll kind of see like a mixture like you probably see a lot more people taking pictures of the finished Sherwin Williams building which will have illuminated lights in the evening time and then Tower City will be lit up as well yeah there'll be I'm sure photographers are gonna have a heyday of finding new angles to capture the skyline with
If you're enjoying this video, feel free to hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. It's crazy. I just, you know, I hit 1,000 subscribers, I think December 29th. It was definitely the end of December of 2022. And I'm already at uh, like 1,169 subscribers, I think, as of before I started this stream. That's, you know, less than a month getting that bump in subscribers is nice. So I'm, I'm already thinking to myself, oh, geez, like to... The path to 2,000 subscribers is going to be much quicker than the path to the first 1,000 were. So I always appreciate everyone who tunes in and enjoys seeing the exploring on Poco Traveler, whether it be in Cleveland or other cities. I will be, I have a conference for work coming up at the end of February. And that's going to be located in St. Louis, Missouri. It'll be my first time in St. Louis. So whenever I'm not doing conference stuff, I'll try to shoot some videos in St. Louis. stone church I don't think the door is open and I always hesitate to go in yeah it says please use the side entrance but it is a beautiful church inside if you ever feel like stopping by there One little note that I read about Tower City Center. So don't get too excited when I announce this because it's not the fountain that you probably are thinking of. So you remember they turned that fountain into Skylight Park last year and people kind of gave it mostly negative reviews. I'm talking about the main fountain. So that is still Skylight Park. Nothing has changed with that. But if you recall... When you first go into Tower City and you're starting to walk a little bit and you see like the first set of escalators, there was like a, I don't know, I don't know if the fountain is the right word, but it was definitely a water slope. Like it was a slanted thing that would have water sliding down it. And maybe at the bottom, it was like a little pool of water and you could sit on the ledge near it. It was kind of like a mini fountain in that portion. That has been dormant for quite a few years. And I thought it was never just going to return. And all of a sudden, yesterday on social media, they announced, oh, you know, after much repairs and work on it, that the, that particular fountain is now back up and running. And they had like a little video of it. Some people in the video mentioned how the flow of water seemed pretty slow. But hey, something's better than nothing, right? So I'm not going to feature that in this video, but it's worth pointing out. And at some point, I'll probably highlight it inside of Tower City. As we're passing by the largest, well, I shouldn't say largest, but I mean tallest building in downtown Cleveland, Key Tower.
very pretty sky right now as the sun is setting. I like the you know seeing the clouds when it's not necessarily white clouds. You've got the dark blue shade. Sadie Lamp Duo, back in downtown Cleveland. Yes, welcome to the live stream. You can see the people gathering with their dogs up on Mall B, I think, right? Yeah, I think that's Mall, I think we're on Mall A now, Mall B, and then Mall C is the one across the street from Hunting, Huntington Convention Center. Walter Mitty Fonzo says, Mr. Poco, could you explain how they work the use of those scooters all over downtown? I was on jury duty a few months ago, and they were new to me as I am not a downtowner. Yeah, so it's not only in downtown Cleveland, but a bunch of other cities too. So as far as I know, they have nothing to do with the city of Cleveland itself. I mean, city of Cleveland may set some loose regulations saying whether they can or can't operate business, but it's a bunch of different companies. Like you may see some Lime scooters Lime is a company. You may see a company called Bird with scooters. And there's like probably really like four or five different companies. And the way they work is that you have to download that company's app on your phone. Say if it's a Bird scooter, you would download the Bird app. And then there would usually be like a GPS map in the app that kind of tells you where the scooters are located in downtown Cleveland or wherever you're currently at. And then you would click on like the particular scooter or there might be a number on the scooter itself. You like click that in the app and you indicate that you want to unlock it and start riding it. Of course you'd have like a membership or pay by the minute that you're riding, something like that. Then once you unlock it, you ride it. And when you're finished, I think you indicate that either in the scooter itself or the app. I've never used one of the scooters myself. I've only used in other cities, some of the bicycles that can be similarly rented, like an electric bicycle. And I th I've, even though I've never ridden one, I always think to myself, God, they must be somewhat easy to ride because I swear these people just like zip by on them almost like in a crazy fast fashion <laughs> two other quick nuggets that I read about one that I read earlier today from the downtown Cleveland Alliance by the way if you don't if you're from Cleveland and you don't follow the downtown Cleveland Alliance on social media be sure to do so they are always announcing the latest events or like fun little initiatives that they're trying to do to promote downtown Cleveland so that's where I discover a lot of these things but they just announced earlier today that whenever there's like four inches of snow this is for this coming a uh, few weeks or months whenever there's four inches of snow on the ground they will possibly initiate I forgot what branding they use but it's some type of like winter impromptu event here where they're going to have maybe some like sleds or other fun snow related activities that they help orchestrate and I believe they're advertising that it would be located like in Mall C. So I guess that would make sense if you kind of got a slope here. You could probably do some form of sledding and like I said, there's probably other activities. Maybe there's 
music or food associated with that. But they said be on the lookout for that. So if you see a big snowfall happen, then follow their social media account and then, then they will announce for sure when they are doing that type of event. So before we sign off, we'll just take a quick look at our surroundings. You got the free stamp down there. Sadie Lamp Duo says, scooter on street corners requires your credit card. Yes, usually in the app, you have to uh, enter your credit card in order to do the payment. And I think sometime in early February is going to be this year's Ice Fest where they're going to do like the ice sculptures near the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That was one thing I missed out on on Martin Luther King Day. Uh, a lot of the museums, if not all of them, in, in Cleveland or by University Circle were free. Like I think the Great Lakes Science Center was free admission. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is free, although that's, that's the only one that would be free for me anyway because I'm a Cleveland resident. And then on the east side, I think the... I, know, I think the art museum was free and maybe the natural history museum. Not 100% certain, but I feel like that was the case. Sadie Lampdo asked, no icebreaker boats on Lake Erie this year? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. I wasn't here when there was that really cold spell where it was like below 28 degree with the wind chill. And I'm sure it felt much colder than that on the lakefront. Yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. If you enjoyed this January update in downtown Cleveland, feel free to, again, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, check out pocotraveler.com for content that I'll be posting there, and we will see you next time.